And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Today, you're going to hear some astounding revelations. You're, you're going to have to change your perhaps your misconception of the way the world works. Today could be a changing event in your life. I want you to gather your family, your friends around the radio, or maybe you're listening on CD, and I want you to listen very, very carefully and closely to what I'm about to tell you. I believe this is glorious news, but it's news that should change the world, change the pattern of world history. It, it should mean new alliances in geographical, uh, well, let's just say well, war and death and who America supports and who it doesn't. I mean, this is big. It's bigger than anything in my lifetime. And I'm going to tell you about it. I have the privilege today to tell you the truth. The truth that is being withheld from so many Americans today. But you, you, dear friend, as a listener of Power of Prophecy, have the privilege and the prerogative to know this truth. Now, many, many of the world's problems are based on the fact, now whether you're pro or con, it doesn't matter, are based on the fact that Israel exists in the Middle East. It has since 1948, when basically the United States, the world's only superpower, recognized Israel. Now, I know that, uh, and you know from my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, that President Harry Truman accepted a bribe from uh, uh, high-flight Jews, you know, multimillionaires many times over in the United States, to do that little political deed. Over in the Soviet Union, the USSR, within a very short time, within, I think, two hours, uh, of when the United States recognized Israel in the Middle East as a nation, then Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union did so. So you had the world's two great superpowers at the time, both recognizing this little nation. Now, at the time, there were not very many Jews in the what was called the Holy Land or Palestine. It was mostly the Palestinians. And then the Jews from, you know, Germany and Hungary and other nations, and finally, eventually, Russia, Poland, and so forth, were overjoyed. And they, they, they went on a great exodus over to Israel. You may have seen the movie uh, Exodus or read the book by Leon Uris many years ago. How Israel was founded, the first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, and immediately... It caused a ruckus when the Israelis began to attack and ethnically cleanse the Palestinians and take their lands. Well, again, all of these things are historical. I'm not going to argue one way or another with anyone about them. Not today. <laughs> I'll save that for another day. But I do have something to argue with you. Or I should just say something to report to you. I'm not even going to argue about it. And it is simply this. Now listen very carefully. I'm going to make a declaration here. It regards a new DNA science finding. You know, DNA came about in 1968 when two British scientists, Watson and Crick, developed this genetic you know, strand. But now you can find out what races or, you know, you, you came from what your ethnic background is. I was just talking with um, my good friends, a doctor and his wife. We had them over to dinner the other night, 
and they were laughing. They both, I think for like $199 each, sent their blood, you know, they, they got a little kit from this company, sent it off, and it came back with an analysis. And they were telling me all of the, you know, <laughs> the races they were. They were surprised if they were that many races. Well, many Americans are like that. Now, for myself, my father, when I was a young kid, we had six kids in the family. He had reddish hair, sort of sandy-colored skin. And I would ask, where did I come from, Daddy? <laughs> he would say, oh, you're Irish. Ah, oh, we're all Irish. The old Morris people, we're all Irish. Well, you know, my dad had a third-grade education. He knew a lot, though, for a third-grader, let me tell you, a lot more that college graduates do today. But that's what he told me. Now, one day we suddenly got in the mail this invitation, and basically it said, we've looked up your name, Mars, M-A-R-R-S, and we find that you're one of the Scottish clan. Now, the Scottish clan, the card said, came over from Scotland, uh, and they, you know, came to live in Texas and Oklahoma, Kentucky, in a couple of other states. Now, we're going to have this coming <laughs> April or whenever, we're going to have a big meeting of the, of the Mars clan, the Scottish Mars clan. Had a little picture there, you know, of a Scottish guy in the kilt, you know, skirt, which I thought, whoa, I don't like that. But anyway, <laughs> I was I was only about 15 or 16 at the time. And with my dad getting that card in the mail, being invited to the great Mars, the Scottish clan, he said, well, we're Scottish. I mean, he just turned on a dime. From being Irish, we were suddenly Scottish. Well, you know, every St. Patrick's Day, I am Irish. But uh, I have to admit, I've done a little genealogical research of my own. I find I am Scottish. There's even a town in Scotland where many of the Marses live. Actually, they were called M-A-R-R, the Mar. But they pronounced it as the Mars. Okay, so I'm Scottish. But I didn't know that before. But that's on my father's side of my mother. I asked her, she said, well, I'm French and Indian, and she named a few more. She probably is. She looks a little French. You know, she's got dark hair and, I don't know, got a little bit of Indian, she says. I don't know what kind. But uh, <laughs> that's what she claims. But she could be surprised. She doesn't really know. Their ancestors came over from some place. That's the way most Americans are. They really don't even know their heritage. And you know, it doesn't really matter to me one way or another. I didn't change the day I, I went from being Irish to Scottish. <laughs> it didn't matter to me at all. I was still an American. That's all I was. Heinz 57, well, just great. I'm an American. Born in Texas. That's what I claim. And I'm happy to, to be an American. But what if you were born, quote, unquote, a Jew? And you were told you're really not an American. You may have been born in America, but you're a Jew. You will always be a Jew. You're racially a Jew. You're God's chosen people. Only you are special. Your Talmud says only you are like a God. All the Gentiles are like cattle to you. Someday you will rule the world as the great Jewish race. And what if you came to believe that? And what if you had an opportunity about 1948 to establish that nation that you're told God gave your founding father, Abraham? Abraham, Genesis 12 says, was told by God, you have all this land, your, you and your seed, your seed, your, your, your heirs will have all this land. See this? You say God gave this land of Israel over the Middle East to my founding father, Abraham. He was the founder of the Jewish race and I'm Jewish. Okay. All right. And you say, I have a right to that land. I have a right to go over there and take it away from the Palestinians. And you American Christians, you have an obligation to help me. Because God gave the land to my race. He gave the land to my people. My founding fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, this is their land. And it shall be our land too. 
We Jews are the descendants of Abraham. We're the seed of Abraham. We shall be the eternal people forever. And if you're a Jew, as indicated by your mother's or grandmother's birth, we have a law in Israel now, since 1948, we call the law of return or the right of return. You can immigrate to Israel, but only if you're a Jew. If you're not a Jew, we may allow you to visit, but you better butt out. We don't want you. We're a special nation, a Jewish nation. By race, we have the blood of the Israelites flowing in our veins. How'd you feel? Special? Chosen? God's chosen people? He gave Abraham the title of the land, said it's your seeds forever? Was that the way you would feel? Mm, all right. I was listening to Governor Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, on Fox News. He has a program once a week. This last week, he was in Israel. And he explained, I'm, I'm broadcasting this program, says Governor Huckabee, from Israel. Oh, it's wonderful to be here in God's holy land. He said, I have made 20 trips to Israel. This is a very special place. And the people are special. They're God's chosen people. Governor Huckabee, you see, is a big Zionist, a Ziophobe. He says, God gave them the title to the land through Abraham. They are the seed of Abraham. They deserve the land. And as a Christian, I have a duty, he went on to explain, of making sure that they get all the land. Well, is that so? It seems that Christendom does believe that, doesn't it? Well, not every Christian. I, I have discovered that probably, oh, oh, I don't even know, maybe one-third of all the Christians, but the most activist Christians do, the evangelical Christians. You know, the John Hagee, J Jerry Falwell, Paul Crouch, Pat Robertson, all of those people do. They say God requires us to support Israel because it's made up. It's a nation founded for Jews. And they're the descendants of Abraham. They're God's chosen people. We have an obligation. A, 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 it is our responsibility to make sure they get all the land, whatever they need. We'll give it to them. Of course, we have the whole United States of America. Now we're the only and sole remaining superpower. We can do it. And we have done it. We've gone to the Middle East and look, we got every, we, they're there. They're staying. We've even given them, well, they stole it from us, but they got it anyway, nuclear bombs. Anybody try to take their land or the land they got in 48? The Palestinians used to have, but no more. They'll kill you. They're threatening people. We got the bomb. We'll do it. And even though right now we're in a sequester period in our budget and everything, and they say we don't have much money to spread around, Congress just approved $687 million more for the Jews, and it's going over there. Whatever they want, they're going to get. I, you know, Obama says we have to lay off 850,000 people from the Pentagon. Lay off 850,000 Americans, but, but no problem. The Jews will get their, all that, those hundreds of millions of dollars. And we have given them billions, trillions, since 1948. That's why they're powerful today. Israel is, has the fourth greatest, you know, military force on earth, we're told. I'm not sure of that because the Lebanese kicked them in the back ends the last time around, but <laughs> they claim they do. They've got nuclear subs that France has given them. Or excuse me, Germany, but France also has given them nuclear subs, I understand. They've got the latest in technology in their military, courtesy of the United States of America. They've got an iron dome to protect them from the missiles that supposedly come. And we are right now threatening Iran. We will get into a nuclear war with Iran, or some kind of war. Iran, our intelligence services say, has no nuclear bombs and is not even 
considering it. But nevertheless, we say, stop all your nuclear research. Stop all of it, or we're going to attack you. That's what Obama's saying. Secretary of State John Kerry said, it's not an idle threat. He really means it. And Netanyahu said, that's a red line there. We're going to go after you. And all of it's because Christian evangelicals are putting pressure on Obama. And Israel, the Israeli lobby, is putting pressure. And every Christian evangelical that I talked to said, we must do it. God requires it because the Jews are the descendants of Abraham. They're God's chosen people. They will be forever. You can't take it away from them. Well, I've told you many times, and I've written it in my book, you, you see all the biblical background and references, support, telling you the opposite, just the opposite. But what does Tex Morris know? He's an idiot. They're God's chosen people. They're the seed of Abraham. They can be traced all the way back to Abraham. He doesn't know anything. That's what they tell you. I get letters all the time. Tex, don't you know? You, you say bad things about the Jews. You, ooh, I'm scared for your life. Oh, God is going to punish you for even suggesting that they don't get the land or that we don't give them this, you know, 500 million here or six billion dollar here. Oh, we've got to do it because they're the Jews and they're so, so much more spiritual than we are. And, 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 and they come all the way from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and we've got to do it. And don't you understand why you're, you're saying bad things about the Jews? God's going to get you. God gives me great liberty in saying these things. But nevertheless, Christians think that God is just, he's running right after me. I better look behind. You know, it's like the old black uh, baseball star, you know. They said, how did you get so far up in baseball? He said, don't don't look behind. Somebody's gaining on you. <laughs> don't, don't look behind. Maybe God's behind my back. But I, I think he is behind my back. I think God's promoting me. I think God is saying, Tex, go out and tell people the truth. And here is the truth. Here's the truth. Listen very carefully. New DNA science confirms that the Jews are not descendants of Abraham. Let me repeat it again. First of all, let me ask you, do you, do you believe in DNA science? I do. Across the United States, thousands of murder cases are being solved right now through DNA. If you find a person's DNA on the, on, on the death weapon or somewhere on the evidence related to the case, there's about, you know, one in, you know, 180 billion <laughs> chances that it's, that he's the guilty party. And across America, people are being convicted through DNA. If the blood is there, that's it. Now, again, this comes from the research of Watson and Crick in 68, but we've gone a lot further now. We're about 45 years into DNA research. And as I said, they're able to find amazing things now. You, you can find out whatever race you are and all the races. And I'm just amazed at all the DNA research, and I've I've kept up with this over the years, and I've I've just been very very interested in it. Well, let me tell you about the newest research. The new I'm going to repeat it again. I I have to because people don't seem to understand this. The newest DNA science, genetics research confirms that the Jews, the people who call themselves Jews. In the Middle East, they're there in the nation of Israel, and they're in the United States of America. There's about, oh, 15 or 16 million Jews in all the world, demographers say. And seven and a half million are in Israel. Seven and a half million in the United States, by the way. And then there's maybe about 800,000 or a million in all the rest of the world combined. The United States has been such a welcoming nation that we have you know, <laughs> almost half the Jews here. But they are not Jews. Say, say what? 
say, huh? <laughs> the people who call themselves Jews are not Jews. I call myself Irish. I was told I was Irish. I was Irish one day and we got a card in the mail that said you're Scottish and suddenly I was Scottish. And you know what? Now I find out after all this research, I am Scottish. I asked my dad about it. And he just laughed. He said, well, I thought we were Irish. My dad told me I was Irish. <laughs> Where did your dad come from? Well, Arkansas. He was one of those, you know, guys waving the backwoods and all. Okay. <laughs> he didn't know. He was just guessing. He looked in the mirror and he was a little sandy haired. Yeah, I must be Irish. Didn't matter to me. Jewish, Gentile, Irish, Scottish. But to some people, it matters. Their, their race really matters. Evidently, some people believe that even God cares, that God is a racist, and he made this nation his chosen. They will forever be his chosen. No other race can be his chosen. They are the eternal people, forever chosen. Well, who am I talking about? Well, the Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, all the way up to today. Where are they at? Israel. No, they're not in Israel. Let me repeat, new DNA science confirms that Jews are not, are not, are not descendants of Abraham. Hmm. Now, the newest DNA science finding is from Dr. Iran Elhaik. By the way, he's Jewish. He's Jewish. He wouldn't have any reason to lie to you, would he? He loves to be chosen. He loves to be special. But he's a scientist. He just reports to you. And he has reported. You see, he is with the McCusick Natans Institute of Genetic Medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. In research, which was accepted December 5th, 2012, just a couple months ago, and published by the Oxford University Press, that's the most prestigious, on behalf of the Society, now all these are big highfalutin organizations, so get, get out your pen and write it down, on behalf of the Society of Molecular Biology and Evolution, in that genetic research, Dr. Iran Elhaik, again I tell you, he is Jewish. <laughs> He found that the Jews in Israel and in the rest of the world are not Israelites. They mainly come from a composite of races that came out of the kingdom of Khazaria. And therefore, he found that the Khazarian, Khazarian, that is, hypothesis, is scientifically correct. What is the, the Khazarian hypothesis? It says, historians and archaeologists have found in their past studies, that the nation of Khazaria in the 8th century, that's the 700s, there was a king there named Bulan, King Bulan. And King Bulan decided that his great kingdom, and it covered 800,000 square miles. It was huge. It was southern, all of southern Russia. And he was the king there. Now the people there worshipped, and they worshipped, believe it or not, the phallus. The males, well, is sex organ. A lot of people did back then. They would have these herms, these stones, that looked like a man's Sex organ. They would worship it. Along with all these various tribal gods. You know, they worship their ancestors and would pray to them and all of that. But he decided that they would become Jews. And he ordered that all the people would become Jews. And many of them did become Jews. But they, you know how these peoples are, these native peoples. They wanted to keep their old religion. And so they would keep their old religion. They would still worship the male phallus and all of these other things. One of their great symbols there was, get this now, the six-pointed star in Khazaria. The six-pointed star. Why? Because it's a sex symbol. 
It's the ascending and descending triangles linked together, the male and the female linked together in a sexual pattern. That's what the meaning of that is. That's why they worship the phallus and the six-pointed star. But now they blended in Judaism, and they all became, quote-unquote, Jews. Now, let's get this straight. These millions of people in Khazaria who, according to Dr. Iran Elhaik of the Mikusik Natans Institute of Genetic Medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, found that these people, the Khazarians, they converted to Judaism. Now, that's been reported not, not by him. He just, he didn't check that out. He just, he just did the DNA. That's all. I'm telling you what historians have been. I'll tell, give you their names in just a minute. Suddenly they were Jews. I said, well, you can't just be a Jew by, by converting. Well, they did. In fact, Madonna, you know, the singer, entertainer, she's a Jew. She goes to Israel all the time to the Kabbalah Institute, wears her little red, you know, uh, wristband. Yeah, Madonna says, I'm, you know, I'm Jewish now. She converted. Britney Spears did too. Michael Jackson did it for a while. I don't know, he was going back and forth, you know, this religion, that religion. He became a Jew, even had a rabbi. Yeah, he had a, his own Jewish rabbi. Marilyn Monroe did it. She was married to that playwright, Arthur Miller. He was Jewish. She said, I want to be Jewish too. She became a Jew. Marilyn Monroe was a Jew. Sammy Davis Jr. is, well, he was a black man. He became a Jew. He converted to Judaism. It's done all the time. The people of Khazaria, they converted to Judaism too. They became Jews. Now, about that time, there was a lot of, you know, turmoil and chaos in that part of the world, and soon... Southern Russia, or Khazaria, began to be invaded by various peoples, the Cossacks and others. And the, the, the people of Khazaria began to migrate, to migrate. They went into uh, to Russia proper. They went into Hungary, Czechoslovakia, especially to Poland, especially to Germany, into France and so forth. They went through all of Europe. The European Khazars, but they call themselves what? Jews. Now, when you go from the United States to somewhere else, you still call yourself a Christian, don't you? Wherever you go in the world, you're a Christian, whatever your race. And these people were Khazarians. They came from a Turkish, a Turkish, like the Kurds today in northern Iraq and southern Turkey. They were like the Kurds. They were Turks with a little bit of Mongolian stuck in there. Turkic Mongolians. But when they went to Europe, they said, I'm a Jew. And because they worshipped as the Jews, they developed these Jewish communities. But they were all Khazars. Today they're called Ashkenazi Jews. And I'm going to tell you a lot more about this when I return in just a minute. Because it is the Khazars who went in 1948 to Israel. And it is the Khazars who control the nation of Israel today. And they never, their ancestors never set one foot on that land until they themselves did in 1948. They are imposters. They are not Jews. They are not Israelites. And DNA science has proved it. We'll find out the implications of that as soon as we return. Well, folks, my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, is more valuable than ever, as you can see from this latest DNA research. Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, eye-opening revelations and forbidden knowledge about Israel, the Jews, Zionism, and the Rothschilds. Did you know that I have the first 
genetic DNA research ever done on the Jews in this book? I do. Yeah, it's in this book. You'll find it. Dr. Ariella Oppenheim. Dr. Oppenheim is at the Hebrew University. She is Jewish. In 2001, she did DNA research. What did she find? The same thing Dr. Elhite did in 2012. Dr. Oppenheim reported her research very significantly in a top journal. And you can discover this research and all about it in my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. But here's what she said. She found that there were, well, all of the Jews were not Israelites. They came from the Khazars. Not only that, she found that the chromosome of the Cohens, the Cohens, you know, C-O-H-E-N, a lot of Jews named Cohen. When you have that name, it's sort of a dead giveaway that you might be Israelite, possibly, or have a little bit of blood of the Israelites in you. And you can trace your heritage all the way back because it was the Cohens that worked in the, the, the synagogues and temples. They were the, the temple workers, the Cohens. But she found that the, there were there were as many or more Cohens among the Palestinians as there were the Jews. In fact, she found that the Palestinians had more Israelite blood than the Jews did. Now, I want you to think of that. What if all along we've been agreeing that the Jews should displace the Palestinians? should take their archers and their land, should kick them out, should invade them and dest- destroy the Palestinian race and take all their land. Why? Because the Palestinians were not part of the Jewish race. And it was the Jews that we should give preference to. But what if it turns out that the Palestinians have more Jewish or Israelite blood than the quote-unquote Jews do? What do you do then, Christian? John Hagee, you've been attacking the Palestinians. You've been saying to the Jews, you deserve the land. The Palestinians, it's not theirs. God didn't, didn't give it to them. But if in fact they, the, the, the Palestinians, who yes, are Muslims today, not all of them, but many of them are, most of them are Muslim. Some of them are Christian. Most are Muslim. A few are Jews. What if you discovered, Mr. Hagee, that there's more Israelite blood, more blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Palestinians than there are in those who call themselves Jews. What do you do then? Well, Dr. Ariella Oppenheim in 2001 in her DNA research found that. But see, in science, it has to be confirmed. You have to have another major study to confirm the first study. Now in 2012, we have another big study. Dr. Eron Elhite at Johns Hopkins University, he's sure of it. Here's the research. You know, that that's the way science is, folks. Sometimes you believe something and it just turns out not to be so. This is the way all science has been. When they came up with fingerprint research back in the, I think it was the 19th century or so. Suddenly they had a tool. You could find the criminal or exonerate the person who was accused when someone else's, the real culprit, his fingerprints came on the scene because no two people have the same fingerprint and no two people have the same DNA imprint. And you can determine exactly what race a person is or what races and what percent of each race they are through DNA research. You remember up in Massachusetts, the senator, the woman senator, U.S. senator, she just got elected. She's a Democrat. She had been going to these Indian conferences and, you know, she, she claimed she was an, uh, she had some Native American Indian blood in her. But she's, I mean, she's, she's no more Indian than, well, uh, <laughs> what can I say? She, she's just not Indian. When she was confronted with that fact, she said, oh, 
Oh, they said, well, do you, do you have any DNA evidence? Well, I don't have any DNA, but my grandmother, she said that, that we were a part Indian. So I've just been telling everybody we're Indian. We are. My grandmother said so. Well, yeah, well, my grandfather and dad said we were Irish too, but we weren't. Very conveniently, you see, Indians in America, the Native Americans, many of them have gotten rich now. They found oil on their lands, resources, and they have these gambling casinos on the Indian reservations. Suddenly, everybody wants to be an Indian now. All these people go down and register and say, yeah, I'm an Indian. Yeah, my father was, you know, one-fourth Cherokee or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Why? They want to get in on the gravy wagon. Yeah, everybody wants to be an Indian today. But the Indian reservations all have these records, and you have to go through all this nonsense. Now, you know, just get DNA. There you go. But what we find is that DNA says the Jews, so-called, in Israel are not really Jews. They're Khazarians. They don't come from Abraham. They don't have any. Many of them have no blood in them. And I talk about that. But I talk about many other things in this book. I want you to have this book, Conspiracy of the Six Point Star, for just $25. It's a huge book. We'll send it to you. Conspiracy of the Six Point Star. Here's how to get your copy. Phone us toll free, 1-800-234-9673. 1-800-234-9673. Or write to us at 1708. That's Power of Prophecy or Tex Mars. 1708. Patterson Road, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. You can also go to my website, powerofprophecy.com. You'll see it there. And you can read the article for yourself. Jews are not descendants of Abraham. New article I've just written explaining all this. An amazing scientific discovery. Now let's return to our regular program. We're talking about the DNA research that just came out by Dr. Iran Ilhaik, Jewish extraction, so-called. But he himself says, well, I'm, you know, I'm made up of all these races. Wait just a minute, Dr. Ilhaik. You mean you're not God's chosen? Well, no. You mean you're not the seed of Abraham? Abraham God didn't tell Abraham, I'm going to give you this race, this land forever? Ilhaik says, no. It was all made up. It's not true. Well, that changes everything, doesn't it? Think about that. Science has proven those who call themselves Jews are not Jews. DNA science has confounded the Christian evangelicals by proving conclusively through science that most of the people in the nation of Israel and in world Jewry are not the descendants of Abraham. They say they are. They say they're Jews, but they're not. And they blaspheme the name of Jesus. The nation of Israel today is populated with seven and a half million imposters. Now, they didn't know they were imposters. They didn't know they were liars. But somebody should have read the Bible, and somebody in the Christian evangelical world should have read the Bible. I've been preaching this for many years here. I knew what the science would say, that Jews are Khazars, not Israelites. The Jews of America, Europe, and Israel are descendants not of Father Abraham, but of King Bulan and the people of ancient Khazaria. A Turkic peoples. They're not Jews. <laughs> they were, they were pagans who converted to Judaism in the eighth century. As converts, they call themselves Jews, but none of their blood comes from Israel. They're not the seed of Abraham. Now, if you want to say, well, I, I just, when I say that, I'm, I don't mean the seed of Abraham. I just mean the Jews today. Well, you mean like Britney Spears and Madonna and Marilyn Monroe and is that who you're talking about? That's who you're going to worship and love and elevate? Is that, is, is, is that what you're going to do, good friend? The people of Israel 
are not the seed. They're not the ancestors of Abraham. They call themselves Jews, but in fact, DNA science has shown them to be Khazars. Here's what Dr. L. Hike said in an interview with Haaretz, Israel's daily newspaper. Quote, there are no blood or family connections among the Jews. Let me repeat that again. There are no blood or family connections among the Jews. That's what Dr. L. Hike, who is himself, quote unquote, Jew, said in an interview with Haaretz, Israel's daily newspaper. He went on to say this, quote, the various groups of Jews in the world today do not, do not share a common genetic origin. <laughs> Their genome is largely Khazar. Now, friends, God did not give the land to the Khazarians. It's simple as that. Thus, when Prime Minister Netanyahu came to America and said, God gave the land of Israel to our Israelite forefathers, he's, he's lying. He's absolutely wrong. There are no Israelite forefathers. <laughs> Today's Jews have no Israelite connection at all. To go back to what Dr. L. Hike said, there are no blood or family connections among the Jews. They're all just a big, unrelated mess of people, like the United States people are. We're just, you know, everybody's different over here. The melting pot, it's called. They're a melting pot, too. Well, uh, I'm not going to give any more money to Israel. I want it to go to the children of Israel. I want it to go to the, the eternal Jews. I want it to go to the chosen people of God. Well, then don't give it to Israel anymore. Go out and find the chosen people of God. Why'd I do that? Well, I'll tell you how in just a minute. I'll tell you exactly how. The Bible will tell you how to find the true descendants of Abraham. Oh, that's the good news. That's the good news. There is a way we can determine the descendants of Abraham. And it's not by DNA. It's not, it's not by DNA. But if you're looking for the true Jews, the true Israelites, don't go to Israel. You know, I was reading that about 55% of the quote-unquote Jews in the nation of Israel are not religious. That, isn't that interesting? 55% of those who claim to be Jews in the nation of Israel are not religious. They're there because they say they're Jews and are not. They don't even go to church. They don't go to the synagogue. There's nothing. They have no religious connection at all, which goes along with the Bible. Now, listen to what the Bible says. Boy, listen to what the Bible says. In Revelation 3, verse 9. Behold, this is God speaking. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold. I will make them to come and worship at thy feet and know that I have loved thee. Revelation 3, verse 9. He's talking to Christians here. So God says these are not Jews. They say they are, but they're not. What are they? The synagogue of Satan. All of those in Israel today are the synagogue of Satan. If you're sending money to Israel, if you're helping them rebuild the temple over there, you're helping Satan. The synagogue of Satan. Jesus told the Jews of his day, your father is the devil, and his works you will do. But they were actually Jews back then. 2,000 years ago, he was speaking to the Jews. Think about that. They were indeed the physical seed of Abraham. But then in 70 AD, the Romans got tired of the Jews and their pesky rebellion. They sent in a general, and that general went in there, and he destroyed 
the temple. Just as Jesus said he would. Not one stone was left on another. He destroyed the city of Jerusalem. And he took hundreds of thousands of the Jews away to captivity. Never again was there in Israel. Until 1948. Think about that. In 70 AD they were destroyed. Now Jesus said that's what was, what was going to happen. This temple, see this temple? It's going to be destroyed in three days. And it was. In 70 AD. See these people, all of these Jews? Behold, Jesus said. It's in, it's in Matthew. Read it. Chapter 23, chapter 24, chapter 25. Jesus says he will leave the house of Israel. He will make them desolate until he returns. Desolate until he returns. What could be more desolate than a bunch of liars over there saying we're Jews that are not, but in the synagogue of Satan? What can be more desolate than that? And Jesus said it. I'll destroy this temple. And you people who call yourself Jews and are the synagogue of Satan, I'm going to make you desolate. You won't have anything. The house of Israel is desolate. And it is. It is not even in existence today. And people of a different race are claiming themselves to be Jews. And they have now got a hold of the land of Israel. And they grab the, the, the people there by the throat, the Palestinians, who are the true Jews. If there's any Jews at all, it's probably the Palestinians and only a minority of them. They've grabbed those people by the throat and said, get out. You're fake people. You shouldn't even be here. We deserve this land. God gave this to our father, Abraham. He is our father. Not, he's not, he's not their father. The Jews are in Israel for one reason and one reason only. Because the United States and its president, in 1948, recognized the nation of Israel. And Harry Truman did not recognize the Jewish state of Israel. He took his pen. I've got it in my book, Conspiracy of the Six Bullet Star. You'll see the actual letter where he de gave them their independence. And they had written in Jewish state. And he took and he lined through the Jewish state. He lined through it. I'm not going to make you a Jewish state. You know what? I think Truman may have known something about that. He may have known that they were not true Jews. I'll just make it the state of Israel, not the Jewish state. The United States did not recognize the Jewish state of Israel. They had just claimed it. And they are liars and they are imposters and they're blasphemers too. Now, how, how do I say that? Can it be that they're really blasphemers? That's what it says in Revelation 2 verse 9. The synagogue of Satan are blasphemers. How can they be blasphemers? What is blasphemy? It's, to, it's to, to, to claim or to call or to identify the true God in heaven, Jesus Christ, as something that he's not. To say something horrible about him. Like his mother was a whore. Like he's a bastard. That's what the Jewish Talmud says. That's blasphemy. They're blasphemers. They're the synagogue of Satan. And they're not the eternal people. They're not true Jews. They're not Israelites. Do I have to tell you a hundred times? DNA science has proved it. Dr. Oppenheim in 2001, Dr. L. Hike in 2012, and all of their prestigious, you know, journals and all that. Now, Dr. L. Hike, I, I, maybe I can call him up and get him on this program because he's going to be in a lot of trouble. I've got his picture and I did a lot of research on him. He's just going right along there. And doing this research, 
He thinks he's done a great thing for science. But boy, the Jewish, the rabbis are going to go nuts with this. They're going to go crazy. Now, now we're, we're saying science shows you're not even a Jew. Whoa! They're going to go crazy. We couldn't do this in 1968 until Watson and Crick. We couldn't do this before. The historians, the archaeologists wrote all about Khazaria. They said the Jews came from there. They're not really from Israel. And everybody went, oh, we don't believe you historians. We don't believe you archaeologists. Y'all are full of baloney. <laughs> the whole Christian evangelical world believes that the Jews are Jews. They say they're Jews, they're Jews. Well, I'm, okay. This coming St. Patrick's Day, I'm a, I'm a Irish for one day. Kiss me, I'm Irish. You ever seen those buttons people go around with <laughs> where kiss me, I'm Irish? Yeah, kiss me, I'm Irish. Wanda, come on in here and kiss me. <laughs> Wanda's my wife, by the way, in case you don't know. <laughs> but think about that. Do the Jews, the Khazarians, that is, not do exactly as our Lord prophesied? Do they not persecute the Palestinians? And defile the land, claiming that is that they are the original inhabitants. You know, I've done research on the founders of Israel. David Ben Gurion, the first prime minister. Guess what? He came from Poland. He had never set foot in Israel, never. But he came there and helped them kill all the, a bunch of Palestinians and take over the country. They were, they had all the arms from the communists and from Britain and the United States. Then he changed his name. Over in Poland, he was named David Grun, G-R-U-N. Suddenly he became David Ben-Gurion. He changed his name. Then there was a guy named Sismon Persky. He was Polish too. Never been to Israel. But he said, my, my forefathers were here. While they were given the title of this land, 5,000 years ago, we Jews were given the title of this land. I'm the seed of Abraham. That's what Sizmon Pereski said from Poland. Then he changed his name. He became Shimon Perez. He's the, he's the president of Israel today, Shimon Perez. There's a guy that took over the whole country in 1917, communist Soviet Union. And 66 million people died in the concentration camps, the gulags of the Soviet Union. His name was Lenin. Lenin, Vladimir Lenin. But wait, that wasn't his real name. He was a Jew. His real name was Vladimir Ulyanov. <laughs> but he called himself Lenin. Friends, listen to me. We have been lied to. You have been lied to. Now you have an opportunity to correct the record. The Khazars never set foot in the Middle East. They're not the seed of Abraham. They're not Jews. And we should thank Dr. Iran Elhaik of Johns Hopkins University and his associates. They performed a valuable re uh, service with their DNA research. To Christianity, yes, because as a Christian evangelical, all these millions of people have been deceived. Now we can correct that. We can correct it. And we can go to the Palestinians and say, we're so sorry. You've been persecuted. You, you've been put down. And many of you are actually Jews. Wow. Now, God said that the seed of Abraham would inherit the land. The seed of Abraham would inherit the land. Who is the seed of Abraham? It's not, none of the Jews are over there. They're all fakes. They're all imposters. Who then are the seed of Abraham? What are evangelical Christians to do? They've been taught all these years, we've got to promote the seed of Abraham. What are they to do now when they find that the Jews are not seed the seed of Abraham? They're a bunch of fakes. 
DNA science has proven it. What are they going to do? Let's go back to the Bible. Let's find out who the seed of Abraham are. It may surprise you to discover that if you're a Christian, you are the seed of Abraham. Don't believe it? Well, let me read it right here. This is Galatians 3, verses 27 through 29. Remember, Genesis 12 says that Abraham would be made father of many nations and his seed would inherit the land. Who are his seed? Here's what it says in Galatians. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek or Gentile. For ye all are one in Jesus Christ. We're all one. If you believe in Jesus, that's the key. Because it says in the very next verse, Galatians 3, 29. Never forget this verse, friends. Galatians 3, verse 29. It's the answer. It's the answer you've been looking for. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Greek. It doesn't matter what race you are. Or a male or a female, it says. Read the verses, it says it right there. If you believe in Jesus, then you are Abraham's seed. It's a spiritual seed. It's a spiritual. That's the only thing that matters. Spiritual. Jesus said, you must be born again in spirit and in truth. You can't be born. You can't go back into your mother's womb. He told Nicodemus, you got to be born again in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you are. You can be black. You can be brown. You can be Chinese. You can be Mongolian. You can be Jewish. Yes, even Jewish. You can be Khazar. You can be American. American, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if ye be Christ's, if you belong to Jesus, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, you're overcomers, friends. That's what you are. You're a Christian. You're an overcomer. Revelation 21, verse 7 promises, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. How many things? All things. Well, I won't inherit the Middle East. Yeah, you will. You, you'll inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. This is the great secret that every Christian should know. God is not a racist. The Great Commission extends to every race, every ethnicity. We who love Jesus are his chosen people. We're the eternal people of God. We have the promise first given to Abraham way back in Genesis. The seed of Abraham, that's us. Know this, dear friends, and you will be forever greatly blessed. That, dear friends, is the promise given Abraham and his seed. The seed is you. Well, wonderful hour today. Great being here with you. And next week, we're going to cover another exciting uh, episode, you might say, of the ongoing adventure. So tune in, won't you? Tune in and discover the power of prophecy. <laughs>